Ludwig and the Rhinoceros sounds like some Miramax film from the turn of the 2000s. That would please art house fans, and that's about it. And it would probably be produced by some freak, and 10 people would see it. In reality, Ludwig and the Rhinoceros is a timeless, a classic, a new classic illustrated book that is so on the surface weird, but then you think about it and you see why it is a classic that'll live forever on your bookshelf. Uh, here's the situation. First off, look at the illustrations. The illustrations are awesome because they're vivid, they're day glow, they're bright, they look like some sort of Floridian Miami hellscape through nitrous colors. <laughs> and it's just crazy, the colors. But then you look at the story. And you've got a kid, Ludwig. Ludwig has a rhinoceros in his room, so he calls his dad into his room. And the dad can't see the rhinoceros, but Ludwig can. And you, the reader, can see the rhinoceros because the rhinoceros is in most of the pictures. Why can't the dad see the rhinoceros? It is all about perspective. And it's not about like forced perspective, like, oh, it's not really there. It's an illusion. He's dreaming. No, because it's all about questions. At the end of the book, at the end of the first time that I read Ludwig and the Rhinoceros, I was like, you know what? This is a great children's book. This kind of doubles as a, a primer on philosophy. <laughs> and then I read the liner notes and I'm like, oh my goodness, it is actually 100% philosophical. But you don't have to be a philosophy major or even have the slightest interest in philosophy to enjoy the book because of the colors and the absurd story. However, if you're the kid or the young adult or the guy reading this or the person reading this, whatever, that likes to question things and say, what if? Why is there not a rhinoceros in this room? How could there not be? Sure there is over there, but it's a small room. I don't see a rhinoceros. Oh, the questions just make your head spin. It's actually Ludwig, the particular Ludwig in the book is Ludwig Wittgenstein. And I remembered that name from my studies of philosophy when I was in college. Whoa! Suddenly it comes full circle and my broadcasting degree starts to pay off just a little bit from Ludwig and the Rhinoceros. But again, this is a very, this is a great example of an illustrated book that's way smarter than you, but doesn't wear its intelligence on the sleeve to make you look like you're not smart. This is the kind of illustrated book that makes kids think. It makes them realize, it puts them up on a platform that says, no, you're much smarter than you think you are. So don't be afraid to ask those questions of why is there not a rhinoceros in this room? Why is the sky blue? Why is this? Why is that? And it's just one of those books that has that timeless feel from the moment that you look at it. Just the classic color of the, the colors and the shapes to the way the pages are. It's just a great illustrated book through and through. Don't let the philosophy scare you. It's not too smart for you, but at the end of reading Ludwig and the Rhinoceros, you're going to feel a lot smarter, and your kids may ask a lot more questions, but that's okay because it's really cool, and this is one of those illustrated books that's going to live in the bookshelf forever. It's Ludwig and the Rhinoceros.